Tuning in. It's showtime. What is up? It's showtime. Welcome to our 176th episode. This is Tony Gapasone I'm coming at you live from Redwood City, California. I'm a Caucasian guy wearing glasses. Uh, my some would say ugly. I'm not gonna say ugly. It's a festive. It's a festive Christmas holiday sweater. It says get your jingle on. And uh, if you're watching, I do have a reindeer headband thing on thanks to my daughters and i'm probably not going to wear it the whole time because it is a little ridiculous but i'm i'm leaning into it because this is our final episode of 2022 christina is not with us today she got to take the whole month off lucky her she's off we'll have her back with us in january but the final episode of 2022 in the brave maker show is a holiday movie on peacock I'm very, very excited to welcome the director and some of the actors to talk about making See You Next Christmas. I have, ah, I have Christine Weatherup. <laughs> She's going to join first. Hi, Christine. Yes, hi, I'm Christine Weatherup. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I am wearing a festive, I wouldn't say tacky, I think it's quite uh, subtle and nice, uh -huh. uh, holiday sweater uh, with with uh, sort of bulbs on it to be like Christmas lights. And I'm in front of a plaid wrapping paper background. <laughs> Did you just wrap a wall in the back of I've you? I've wrapped my whole self for the month in yes. just Christmas. <laughs> Super impressive. Well, this is really cool. I'm stoked to be able to talk to you because I... I watched your, your film on Peacock. Congratulations. You made a feature oh, film. You. Yes. <laughs> and and people are watching it too. That's so, exciting. <laughs> so cool. It's called See You Next Christmas. It's on Peacock. So uh, go go watch it if you have Peacock. If you don't have Peacock, get Peacock or do the one month free trial, especially this week, the very last week of 2022 when everyone's talking about holiday movies is really fun. So I'm it's really- It's also on Roku and oh. it's also on Blu-ray, DVD, okay. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> iTunes, Amazon, uh, you name it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So did you have uh, Glenn Reynolds with Circus Road Films? I did work with Glenn. Okay, so Glenn's helping me with my feature as well. Oh, so Glenn that's is super wonderful. cool. Yeah. So, because I had so many things I want to dive in when it comes to this uh, indie, you know, life that you have, you know, created this this film. And so, shout out also to your producer Matt, uh, who I've been <laughs> listening to him talk about it on his show called Just Shoot It. So I feel like I know so much about this, but there's also so much I don't know. So let's just dive in. See you next Christmas. Give us the logline. Tell us a little bit about what it's about. Yes. Yeah, so as you can guess, it's a holiday film. And See You Next Christmas is set over the course of six years at the same annual holiday party. So it's a little bit of uh, When Harry Met Sally meets Four Weddings and a Funeral, where you see Ooh. this couple who sort of will they or won't they end up together uh, over the course of six years. And in the process, you also meet their ragtag group of friends and kind of see how the group ages. Uh, and yeah, like I said, it's it's sort of when Harry met Sally with an indie flair. Um, yeah. Great description. So filmmakers who are a lot of our audience, see what she did there. She did this, this meets that kind of thing. It was so <laughs> well done. You could tell you have pitched this thing and it's like, it's like in your It's veins. funny. I haven't in a little while. And really? I was like, Oh, what do I say? So good. I'm glad I passed the test. <laughs> so go follow their film on Insta. Oh, oh. By the way, we have all oh. brought holiday <laughs> drinks. What are you drinking, by the way? I'm drinking a hot apple cider okay. in a Tom and a vintage Tom and Jerry mug. Is uh, that like from a fast food restaurant that you would have gotten <laughs> for free, or what is that from? No, this is. I can't remember what this type of material is. It's. It's. A, I. I got it at an antique shop. Nice. Uh, so. 
Christine, <laughs> Christine leveled up her her mug. Uh, I just got so I haven't drinking this. I'm so embarrassed to admit. I used to drink peppermint white mochas almost on the daily. I haven't had no one, embarrassment there. Gosh, I haven't had one in a year because I tried to cut the calories. But I had one today, and this is super uh, fun. okay. So I'm let's honored talk. that we got the the annual. <laughs> no, honestly, I went out. I'm super stoked on on this uh, whole conversation, and I could probably could talk to you more than our normal 45 minutes. So we're gonna try to squeeze it in. But a couple more questions before your actors come. So. It's um, the film takes place over six years. I, as an indie filmmaker, was kind of watching all of these things that you did. Like you, you know, the first, I think, five parties you're in the same dress because you actually star in it as well. So just talk us through all these kind of little fun things that you did to make an indie film doable, right? On a yeah. small budget. Well, one of the things uh, that we did was shoot it in two locations. Uh, and one of those locations was our own apartment. Yeah. Uh, so Matt, who was a producer along with Beatrice Jaheen, uh, Matt is my husband and he and I lived uh, in that apartment and that's half the movie. So shooting in a location that you have access to is obviously the most indie thing. Um, and yeah, we did it in 16 days. And for the first half, when it was our location that we had access to, we did it over the course of three weeks. So we did, because they're, they're individual parties, we would do a party at a time and we do sort of a long weekend. So we do Friday to Sunday and then Monday through Thursday, we would redress the set and change it for the next year. And then it all starts over again with the next year of the film. And so we did it. I, I used to joke sort of like miniature boyhood where we'd give some time. I originally had thought we would do it over months, uh, although committing cast and crew to, you know, yeah. sort of shooting every month for a weekend might be might be a challenge. Um, but that was one of the things that made it indie. And then the location that we didn't have access to that we were renting, we shot all of that within a week. So that was sort of the most typical filmmaking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm trying to think what other indie indie details. Yeah, and the rent, the one you rented was the house, the very last one. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because I also know this little fun fact: you all bought a house in the middle. So I was like, when did they work <laughs> that out? That's amazing. But you, you know, it's funny because right before we we bought the house actually in 2021, but we had started looking for a house in 2019 pre pandemic, yeah. and we were close. And I joked like, hey, if we get this house, because we shot right before the pandemic in January and February of 2020, and I was like, what if we get a house and then we shoot in the apartment and then we <laughs> use the house like it was such a I mean fortunately it all worked out but uh that would be one way to buy a house just so you could use it as a location <laughs> well I'm sure it will be in your a future film of yours as yes well. yes all right so we're gonna bring the cast in but let's talk about the casting process you had a casting director who worked with yes. you so so talk about you know how you found these actors and I'm sure some of them you had worked with before but talk about that that, that whole process for you and what that was like a hundred percent. Well, so Jane Flowers was our casting director. And I think, you know, oftentimes indie filmmakers, I think, don't don't seek out casting directors because it seems like a bigger hill to climb that like, oh, no, then we're, you know, they're out of reach or they're too expensive or all these all these reasons that we kind of get afraid to, you know, extend our, our network. Uh, but Matt had worked with uh, a pair of casting directors previously who he asked, like, who's who's an up and coming casting director who, you know, who this would be a win for, you know, and I think that's as an indie filmmaker, the biggest thing to ask yourself when you're bringing on team members is who is this project meaningful for? Who is it going to matter for? Because when you're getting favors from people, you know, even though it's lovely to have friends who can who can do favors for you you know, the movie's not going to be as important to them. And therefore, mm -hmm. you know, I think it, I, we wanted a team who this movie would matter to just like it matters to us and who it's going to help them move forward in their career. And so for Jane, this was a really good opportunity and we hit it off when we met her. And so we worked with her and she brought in a ton of actors because actually, you know, the only actor who I had previously, there are two actors who I knew before, but Elizabeth Guest, who plays Natalie, she had been workshopping the material with me because we were in a director's oh. workshop where you could bring in actors. And so I knew her and was familiar with her. Uh, and so she she had come in and I, I was very familiar with her work. But everybody else uh, auditioned. Uh, well, Liz oh. auditioned as well, I should say. But everybody else was new to me, except for Dave Child, who plays Cliff, who had been in a, a thing that Matt had done. So I knew Dave, but not as well as Liz. Yeah. But I highly recommend working with casting directors because it just makes you think outside the box and discover mm -hmm. things about the roles you wrote that you never even would have thought of yourself. That's so cool. Okay. Kudos to Jane. We need to get Jane on the show and talk a little bit about that. That was super fun. I loved, 
again, I, I was watching this and trying to enjoy it as an audience member, but I really did geek out because I really did think you did a good job with the casting with, I loved the, look at the production design. I saw Squaresville, another show you all were a part of on the wall. <laughs> good the eye. Like, I love that stuff. It was really, really fun to kind of see some of the little tricks and tips that you did. So I recommend, you know, you indie filmmakers who want to make a movie. In fact, I even got like some ideas going like, you should do a Halloween version of this. You could do a val I mean, all so, 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 so fun. Well, let's bring in the actors and hear about their experience. I'm going to bring in Elizabeth vin and aj i'll have you go around and introduce yourself we'll start with elizabeth who uh christine was just talking about go ahead elizabeth hello i am elizabeth guest uh, my pronouns are she her i am uh tall but you probably wouldn't be able to see that on <laughs> this call anyway um and my i'm wearing a pink and green festive sort of christmasy sweater right on vin hi uh, i'm vin vestio uh my pronouns are he him I'm wearing an adorable um, Christmas sweater with a snowman that my wife made me. It's got my name on it down adorable. here. Adorable. That I believe and, you went to the audition or a different I version. I did. Oh, no, I think that. I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, Dress for the uh, role you want to have, everybody. That's exactly <laughs> right. And I'm wearing glasses, which I, no I don't normally do. And I'm also leaning in like I've never been on a, a video chat before. Thanks, Ben. We see you. Thank you. All right. Uh, last but not least, AJ. Oh, man, I love this cast so much. Uh, <laughs> hi, everyone. I'm AJ Meyer. Um, uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. I am uh, uh, an ethnically ambiguous, uh, 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 devastatingly gorgeous leading man. Um, I'm actually wearing um, a, a red sort of uh, thermal sweater thingy that I, this was one of my costumes. I don't have a ton of Christmassy stuff. And so to be festive, I just decided... I'm just gonna wear, I'm just gonna wear uh, something that I wore in the movie because obviously if it was festive enough for uh, for Christine, then it's <laughs> festive enough for this. And I think Christine, that's from isn't that from your six? I am also wearing some. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Caught. Good eye. <laughs> We're caught. We got caught. That's fine. So I'm uh, making some assumptions. Did you all bring some of your own wardrobe to toss into this and get selected with what you had in your own closet? Yes. They, they're all shaking. All their nods. Heads. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I remember one time, uh, Dana, uh, Dana our, our costume designer, we were trying on a bunch of different things and she was like, let's go back to that, that other one. And I was like, oh, you mean the thing that I like <laughs> wore to, to the fitting? Um, but then, uh, uh, I got to, I got to keep a couple things. I got to keep this. I love this sweater. Oh, I love getting to keep things from set. That's cool. Okay. Elizabeth, did you get to keep anything from set? And let's hear about the workshopping beforehand and getting this role. I did get to keep this great dress. Dana kindly let me keep it. I think it's from reformation or something. It's really pretty. So that was, that was a win. And then the workshop was, I mean, it, I was already admiring Chrissy, you know, as she was writing things and, and putting up things as an actor in this workshop. And so then once she started wanting to work with me, I was thrilled and I just, I loved the material. I mean, it was also really exciting to be a part of it as she was writing it in real time. Um, and I just, I, I became super attached to the material. So when I had to audition, I was, <laughs> in a panic because I really, really wanted the part. Um, so it, it made it, it's hard. I think it's harder to audition for people you mm. know and really care about and especially a part that you've been playing. Yeah. Um, it was hard not to care a lot. So, but I'm really glad she, she picked me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that is a hard thing too. I, I think that's some, something we don't talk enough about is dealing with the awkwardness of, uh, working with your friends, sometimes it goes great, sometimes not so great. You got to have contracts and and have real business conversation and, and ethics, I guess. But that fact that it worked out for you is great. I've been a part of things where I've auditioned for friends and they had to let me down hard, like, oh, or soft, whatever. But it, it's just not going to work. But that's the casting process. You just n never well, sometimes know. I think it was hard. I had a lot of really talented friends come in and audition who were wonderful, but just maybe didn't fit the role, sure. you know. And so, but you know, hopefully they understand and hopefully that means the next one, you know. 
So you cast Vin as your on-screen hubby. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. What, so, so you're married to a producer named Matt in real life. So you cast Vin. What was the? What was the? What brought his his husband qualities to life for you to put on screen? You know, it's funny. It was in some ways one of the hardest roles to cast because so the the impetus. I mean, the impetus to make this movie was I really wanted to make a movie. And I myself also uh, throw an annual holiday party, although uh, since COVID, it's been ding, on ding, 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 yeah. right, what you know. <laughs> and so in many ways, I think many of our friends, when they see the movie, they are like, oh, you're playing, you know, like this is the Chrissy and Matt of the, the movie, like the people yeah. who throw it. And the Tom role that Ben plays is it's not Matt and it wasn't meant to be Matt, but of course he's the co-host of it. And there are qualities that are like Matt, but I think when you're auditioning people, you know, it was one part of the process was getting myself out of the headspace of that. I was casting Matt cause it isn't Matt. Um, and then just being open to what each actor would bring to it and the different sides of that character. Uh, and, and Vin, I mean, anyone who's seen the film, it, it, Vin is so charming and wonderful and brings so much, both heart and humor to that role. Uh, I don't know, Vin, do you have anything to say? Was it intimidating to play what <laughs> some people would say is the Matt role, though I don't say that? <laughs> um, I don't know if it was intimidating, but it was certainly something I was aware of and Matt was on set all the time and very sweet and very supportive and very, uh, you know, um, easy to be around. It wasn't, it wasn't ever like, <laughs> you know, he's in the other room. <laughs> he's me, keeping right? it on you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he was in the room during casting and I, I can't remember if I was sort of aware that that was the dynamic. Uh, but yeah, it was never like, never an intimidating thing, but, um, I was definitely aware of it. A fun fact that I don't know if you know this, Vin, maybe you do that. The, the names Annie and Tom are because my middle name is Anne and Matt's middle name is Thomas. And so I thought it was like a little fun as I was writing a nice way to remember it. <laughs> oh yeah. I didn't know that. That's, that's yeah. really cute. That's yeah. a, you have a fun chemistry. Uh, I liked watching you too. And, and Vin, I definitely, yeah, you definitely had a cool, like when you're trying to appease when your character, Tom's trying to appease the new, the new boss, the earnestness that came across on screen. I just thought it was fun and believable. And I love, by the way, the, 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 supporting characters who lived in the build. I mean, all that stuff was just super fun. Who's the guy with the braces? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Zach Canner who plays Doug. Oh, Doug. I love Doug. <laughs> that was really fun. But yeah, uh, Vin, I appreciated your, you know, the, the believability of this guy and the earnestness. And uh, there are some really neat, you know, times in between with you two, Christine and Vin, especially when uh, uh, your character's pregnant. I thought that like, was that year six? It is. Uh, or year yeah. five. Year five. You're five? Okay. Into, yeah. yeah. I just really liked those things. And I know, Christine, you were also pregnant somewhere in there. So there's all these real life things that you threw <laughs> in there, which was really fun. Uh, so just, I, I know, I'm geeking out a lot on that. Like you, what you all brought to life uh, in a really cool, I, I know, boots on the ground kind of way was, was really evident. What was some of the challenges of making this film and putting it together and doing it maybe not you know, consistently day to day in, in like three weeks in a row, but on the weekends, I'd love to hear some of that. I think not doing it, you know, consistently actually was a gift. I think it gave us time, or at least I speak for myself, but, <laughs> but I think having that time, especially in the first half of the shoot to sort of think, rethink how you shot that first week and think about like, what could we do better? How could we make it move smoother? And just also have some downtime because filmmaking is exhausting. And especially when you're, filmmaking in your own home where we slept like literally on set where our bed we'd put mm -hmm. to the side when when uh like on its side when when we were shooting and so I feel like having that downtime was essential for us uh in the beginning to just really plan it and all of that but I think the challenge is I mean there's never enough time and money in mm -hmm. indie filmmaking but I think you make up for it in in passion and I think we were so lucky to have such a passionate cast and crew uh, who the film, like I've said before, was really meaningful for. So when you have, you know, not enough time and money, uh, somehow you make it through and have fun doing it. I definitely think you had fun doing it. Those of you who are listening on the podcast, I can't see, we're playing little clips without sound uh, of the cast dancing and some of the 
the scenes from that's on from my old film. front lawn <laughs> so fun so fun uh and Taylor... also just even looking at this it just brings me back because all these background actors are our friends and family my sister i saw a second ago and you know M M matt was in band camp and a lot of his band camp friends former band camp friends nice. are there in the background there um yeah y'all see this is like a master class in filmmaking it's, oh, and uh, actually in that shot a second ago, I don't know if everyone here knows this, you might see Cole, who's one of our production designers, packing up his gear in the back of that shot <laughs> uh, because he had to go home and it was the end of the night and we were running a little long. And so in that shot, you can see Cole packing up his car. An indie <laughs> film running long on set. That's not heard of, but way to go. You made something. Okay. Uh, this, so, so fun. So like I was saying, you all who are wanting to make films, I, I mean, you're picking up things, you know, use your, your, your friends, uh, film in locations that you have, invite family to be people in the background, cast and background extras. All of these things are what makes one of these indie films come to life. I want to hear a little bit about the dynamic AJ and Elizabeth between you two, because your kind of story is the one sort of moving this will they won't they forward and um i kind of liked I, I was you know anticipating where's it gonna go i was wrong on one little element i thought oh that was cool i like how you brought the other person in and the engagement i'm not gonna do too many spoilers but let's talk about working with these two um christine i'd love to hear for you uh directing style and elizabeth and aj and vin you can comment on this too what's the how's it working with christine as a director you could even use this to encourage her what was it like working with her uh any stories from set we'll or just let you. it all out you can find yeah, yeah. <laughs> hr worst. hr wants I'm to so know glad. no one's no one has asked me this yet so i'm so glad i have the chance to uh no uh it was it was amazing um i was gonna I was thinking Liz, when Liz was doing her intro, she, she mentioned that she's tall. And I was going to mm -hmm. say that the only reason I'm here uh, is because I'm also tall. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, it was amazing. I, I, I didn't feel it was rare to feel like, we, you know, we're talking a lot about like making independent films and, 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 you know, uh, a movie like this, there's all the, always that comment that's akin to like the little indie that could. I, I never felt that way on set, like uh, hardly ever. I mean, obviously, you know, it's a smaller crew when you're working on an independent film, and um, there are certain uh, things that 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 you know, you know, your trailer is you know a room. Uh, what you, Christine, you like rented like the upstairs apartment or something like that. So we, we were very lucky. Our neighbors upstairs had moved out the weekend Whoa. we started shooting and we begged the landlord to let us use that space. <laughs> so That's amazing. That became our, yeah, our green room. So, 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 you know, small crew, no trailer, but like, like other than that, you know, I, it, it um, it never, it never felt like we were making a, um, a indie film to, to me. It was so comfortable um, everybody was uh, super uh, nice. Um, the, the the whole cast crew, like everything, was was it was just like a dream to 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 be on set. And Christine was great. Um, I I uh, had never worked the way that she works, and it was um, it was honestly really supportive and um, interesting and fun and challenging as an actor. Uh, what do you call them, Chrissy? L Lineramas? <laughs> you know, it's funny. Our editor, Andy Young, he he nicknamed Linearama, where we would do on people's close-ups. Uh, I would sort of interrupt. They would do a chunk, and then I would give them a different action to play. And, and part of my background, so I'm an actor, uh, but I've also been teaching actors for a decade plus. And so a lot of, you know, like I would love to sort of in some ways micromanage takes. I don't know. I hope it never felt that way, but kind of play around with the choice. And so, you know, mm -hmm. they would be doing a line and I'd say, you know, this time intimidate her, this time flirt with her, this time, you know, it's, it's sort of trying to think out of the box to see what we could find in it. Um, which then when we got to the edit was so fun because we had such a, you know, and I was so lucky to have cast that was you know, happy to play that way and excited to, to play that way, you know, uh, yeah yeah and it, it, it makes the perform it's really interesting watching the movie back too because you know i remember certain days on set certain scenes that were more challenging than others etc and then what ends up you know on screen it's it's it sort of becomes a little bit of like andy's film right chrissy like it, it what ends up on screen is uh is is this um you know uh mishmash of 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 like a few different performances from mm -hmm. the same 
from the same actor, not not just me, but everybody. Well, and actually, it was very helpful to have that in a few of the most challenging emotional scenes, because like for one, and this isn't per se an emotional scene, but there's a scene where there's a confrontation between Logan and Adler, who Logan is played by AJ and Adler is uh Natalie's fiance. And so in that scene, because we had such a wide range of how AJ played it, you know, we could craft how how much of a jerk he was. And it was it was really helpful to have that balance because that year uh, he is admittedly a bit of a jerk. Uh, but for good reason. And so kind of I like that element that. of the good reason there that you put in there, why and what that character Logan was carrying. That was it, Which it, AJ plays so beautifully. I mean, it's a really challenging, you know, yep. to get the audience on that side. I agree. You know, but I think oftentimes when anyone is is bad and poorly behaved mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's coming from somewhere, whether you know where or not. That's a huge piece I just want to uh, affirm you in, in the, you know, again, like small budgets, short amount of time, trying to make things emotionally impactful. You know, as an audience member, I was tracking like, oh, what is what's going on? Why is this guy being like that? And then you go, oh, OK. Oh, so I'm giving you little spoilers as we are listening here on episode 176. Even if you're listening to this in January after the holidays, go watch it because it's a really great little inspiration about how to write a nuanced character or a complex emotional character that really came through for me. And I thought, OK, cool. I had empathy there and mm. wanted to see something happen you know, uh, for these two characters. That was really good. Well, and one thing in, in your question about cast and chemistry that I thought about uh, that we did before the shoot. So I had heard Mike Birbiglia talk about Don't Think Twice and how before Great. shooting oh. that to get the sort of chemistry of the improv team, they went bowling and, and bonded, you know, the week before. And so the I think it was the weekend before we shot we did like a holiday party at my apartment. So in the space that we were going to be shooting in, just so everybody would get to know each other. We had Christmas crackers, which if and, and a lot of people don't know what those are, but it's like a <laughs> British tradition where there's like charades and fun games inside. And so we did that. We like did sort of an intro ga game and it was all the people, the cast members who were going to be getting to know each other. And so that they would have sort of a bond before. And from a filmmaking perspective, we also shot the Polaroids that in that first year on the wall, being oh, like, oh, they yeah. throw this party every year so we had we, we also got some set dressing uh for free <laughs> squeezed in a shoot day a half a shoot day uh and also got to That's know fun. each other it was super fun and i think also paid dividends in in getting everybody comfortable with one another so it wasn't the first day on set where everybody met so yeah. the yeah the, the feeling of chemistry go ahead elizabeth go ahead Keep no, trying. I remember like the the first conversation that night that AJ and I had. And I remember we were both, you know, like, you know, how you when you meet someone, you're like assessing and, mm -hmm. and taking it in. And it was fun to I just felt like I was in the movie, you know, even though we weren't shooting. So that was fun. And then I was also going to say the thing about, well, I loved working with Chrissy and that she always had like five different ways in her pocket about how to play something, which is so helpful um because we're you know moving and going quick and so she's she was so there and ready to give us different op options and stuff and then also working with aj and everyone um we mostly shot in order so as i was getting to know aj you know natalie and logan also were building up years of knowing each other so it yeah that part was really cool um and special and yeah, I loved working with all of you. Awesome. We, we, also had, we also had the challenge of having <laughs> the really hot and heavy makeout scene in the bathroom, which is in year one, so it's not really a spoiler, <laughs> but that was day one of shooting. So we had met at this little holiday party that Chrissy had thrown, and <clears throat> we're like sitting next well, to Well, actually, you, we had a chemistry read. You auditioned together, so you did meet, but you didn't know. Oh, That's but I, I totally blacked out for the audition. So. <laughs> that was yeah. the one I wasn't there. <laughs> I just mean like getting getting to know each other because in, in that circumstance, you know, you're just like in the sides and, you know, uh, trying to oh, speaking of chemistry. Um, uh, <laughs> there's a clip of us. Uh, for those of you listening to the audio, there's a clip of us uh, about to kiss <laughs> playing right now. But um, uh, that the the ho little ho holiday party that Chrissy's talking about, that was the first time we had we'd like um, spoken that was that was outside of the audition. Uh, space or context and so it was a little like uh, uh uh and then what two weeks later we're like oh wow we have to shoot this 
we have to shoot the scene today. Okay, cool. All right. Well, and then it was just about like, you know, checking in and, um, and you had to climb out a window, spoiler alert, but it's in the first year of the movie. So it's not too, <laughs> too much of a spoiler, but yeah, you, you had to make out and then climb out a window. Yes. Yes. <laughs> did you have an intimacy my, coordinator? We did not have an intimacy coordinator. How'd you coordinate all those intimate scenes? How was that? You know, I guess I defer that to Liz and AJ. I mean, we discussed it, but I'm curious what you'll say. <laughs> I do not really remember. I just remember being doing it and then, <laughs> blacked um, out again. And then, yeah, blacked out. But also, I feel like it was a great thing that we were thrown into that because you know, then you're just immediately comfortable with someone because you've done all of those things. Um, no, I don't know, AJ, do you remember how we, I mean, it was very specific. We had to, you know, the blocking and everything. So that was, yeah. <clears throat> I remember checking it. I remember checking in a lot. Um, yeah. you know, I, I, I didn't want, I wanted to make sure obviously that, you know, it was, um, comfortable for, uh, for Liz and for me and for everybody else on set. So I was, you know, just a lot of, uh, conversation and just, you know, uh, what is, uh, that Brene Brown thing, like name it to tame it, like just saying, okay, we are going to, we are going to make out on our, on our first day on set. Here we go. Um, and then, uh, yeah, there was a lot of ography, you know, to it, like, um, okay, then I, but, you know, we go in here and then I pick you up and then we do this and then, and, um, and then we just, you know, we just went for it. Um, well, I think we maybe did that. a private rehearsal. I think maybe the three of us stepped aside to talk about it before we let crew come in, mm -hmm. uh, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. just to make sure we were all comfortable. But I think both of you were like, let's go for it and kind of freaked out, but also like, OK, we're here. <laughs> all right. Cool. Chrissy remembers uh, <laughs> better than we do, I guess. <laughs> And for the audience member, that they kept referring to that as a hookup. So I kept wondering to think about: was there more that happened, you know, with these characters that we didn't see necessarily? Maybe I don't know. What, what's your thoughts on that? I'm leaving it to the actors. What do you think? <laughs> I, I think the I think the only I think the I think the only off screen uh, continuation of their relationship happens after year three. Um, again, trying to you know. Yeah dance around the uh the spoilers here but yeah yeah i, I hadn't thought about what else went on <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think between i think we talked about between years three and four for the first few months of the the year after year three there's contact and yeah no spoilers <laughs> So if you're just tuning in, uh, we are talking to the cast and director of the Peacock film. I like saying Peacock film. I hope you like hearing that, too. Oh, I like uh, hearing it. See you next Christmas. You can find them on Instagram at see you next Christmas movie. And what's really cool is whoever's doing your social media is doing a fantastic job. There are so many great behind the scenes. Is that you, Christine? It's oh, me. doing it all. In on. Indie film. That's You are doing a great job with all of the Advent stuff and the clip. I mean, I'm super impressed. It's been really, really fun to follow. So go follow well, we them. We have giveaways. So if you're listening live today after this, I'm going to be posting a giveaway for a DVD or Blu-ray. Uh -oh. uh, so pay attention and, and play by the rules and you might end up uh, with a DVD or Blu-ray of your own. I love it. Okay, that's great. Um, so if you are watching live and you have any questions, you want to pop them in the comments, you may do that. Because I do want to talk to, uh, we'll still talk about the film, but I want to talk about just being an actor in LA, which I know most of you are, and a filmmaker, just kind of more of a broader, we're going to lift up out of the film here and just talk about how do you do it? How do you make it? A lot of our people listening and watching want to be doing these things. And, you know, the advice always is just do it. But then uh, you're, you know, looking at your credits, you've got a lot of uh, shows you've been a part of. Just talk about what it's like for your life as an actor in L.A. And how do you I always want to ask, how do people make a living? I have multiple jobs as an actor, filmmaker, and I live in the Bay Area up north, so not in L.A. But how about you? What's it like for you? Let's hear your story. Uh, well, obviously, it looks quite a bit different these days um, with all um, the self taping for auditions and, and that kind of thing. But I definitely have day jobs and um, make money other ways to uh, support the slow times. But um, it's uh, I actually, <clears throat> with all the self tape stuff, I really enjoy it. Uh, running around town, going to auditions and um, doing all that is really taxing and getting to do stuff from home. 
Uh, my wife is also an, a really talented actress and getting to do our auditions together at home is a really like relaxed, uh, there's no time limit, you know, we're both like creative and supportive and, and we can talk about stuff. So um, auditioning uh, these days is actually, I, I, for me, kind of great. Um, but yeah. Any thoughts on what you want to say to the actors who are I mean, coming to the end of the year, things are slowing down a little bit. It's discouraging on my part too. It's like, okay, pretty much things don't really pick back up quote unquote until maybe mid January. Then there's Sundance. Ah, what, what would you say to someone who's feeling like, do I quit? How do I make it? What do they need to do? What, what's your thoughts? I would say, especially this time of year when things are slow, like give yourself the freedom and the license to enjoy the holidays take all the pressure off, like get back to um, sort of a, a center of gravity that finds yourself grounded and happy. And so that when things do quote unquote, pick back up, you're a little more ready for the, for the battle. You know um, I think being as close to happy in yourself as you can before you start doing the work uh, makes you a, a more interesting person all around and a more relaxed performer is what I would yeah. say. Sounds like you're, you're talking about a little bit about self-care too, which I think is super huge. Oh and that reminds me too, when you said being more interesting, you know, as someone who directs, I get a lot of self tapes from actors and sometimes you'll just throw out our casting director. will say, tell us about yourself. It's just so interesting when actors start telling about their acting career. Like we don't want to hear about your acting career. It's really. Cool. We want to hear other things that you're doing. So what I hear you saying, Vin, it's, it's, it's important to have a life and go hiking or do yoga or have a dog and I, I get into other things so you can talk about that stuff and you can actually not only have a balanced life, but then you can use those things in your acting craft. So your life isn't just all acting because we need to be real human beings. So yeah, I, I, I love that. That's a really yeah, great, yeah. great wisdom. Elizabeth, what about you? Um, yeah, I mean, gosh, I, I stay sane by, I've realized that I just need to perform, you know, um, regardless if I'm being paid or not. I think I, I learned that in COVID for sure. And the first part of COVID, I wasn't really doing anything performance wise. And I, I was struggling. So I think, um, just even if it's being in a class or whatever, I'm, I've been busying myself with the groundlings for the last couple of cool. years. And, um, and then all through my twenties, I did UCB and like, I also writing stuff and writing things for myself has really kept me sane. Um, because, you know, it just gives you some sense of agency. I mean, obviously Chrissy is a brilliant example of that. You know, she, she made a movie, yeah. um, and she got to do all of the things and she's still doing the things, you know, <laughs> the publicizing every, all of it, but it's, but I mean, there's, there, that's such a beautiful thing that to be a part of all of the different stages of something and put it out there. And, and I don't know about you, Chrissy, but when I, um, when I have written the things that I've made, the, one of my favorite parts is, is giving parts to people. Yeah. <laughs> because I um, I'll, am always, you know, as an actor, you're waiting for, for a part. So it's, um, yeah, I, I just, just by per performing as much as possible and writing stuff and, and trying to en enjoy, to remind myself that I like to do this. And I actually mm. sort of need to do this. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how, well, I guess, yeah. I don't know how non-artists do it. Because I, I just think I it's an outlet that is truly crucial for me. So, yeah. And then I think I don't love self-tapes as much as, as Vin does. That sounds like such a peaceful. <laughs> 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 um, I, tr I try, but it's, it's a, it's. I miss, I like, I think that's why I've had to go back to the live stuff and classes because getting that immediate response is, I live for it. <laughs> um, so anyway, but yeah, just staying busy, creating opportunities. Um, I was going to add that I think community is really important. And because I think, you know, the advice of just go out and shoot it. I mean, Matt's podcast, Matt Noren, just shoot it. Uh, but there's a big barrier to entry. I know sometimes I can feel like, I know I should just go make something, but like, oh, it costs so much, or how can I do this? Or how can I put it together? But like the the workshop that Liz and I met in Sandbox, you know, by having something every week, it just made me feel like I was, it gave me that outlet. It gave me a sense of camaraderie with all the other directors, writers, actors who were going through the same thing. And so I feel like 
you know, I think the advice from both Vin and Liz is right on that you need to take care of yourself and find the things that you enjoy. But also, I think finding those outlets to create and it doesn't necessarily have to be something that's going to cost money. I mean, getting a group of friends together, even mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like I think podcast community is is huge, like finding other artists and listening to other creators is definitely helps fill my well, especially when I'm feeling low, <laughs> which we I all do. I wholeheartedly, I'm a podcast junkie and I probably listen to two or three a day because I spend an hour walking or hiking with my dog usually every day. So there's like two, you know, in my ear and it's just so great to feel like I, we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the podcast community that is always in my ear. And I started one myself because I want to learn from this. So I totally affirm that. That's great. So I know I want, meant to mention this earlier. I think it's the year five in the film, back to the film, uh, when um, Natalie comes back. To back to the the house and uh, your character is pregnant christine uh that dialogue happening on the couch there oh my gosh that was so good so well written so that emotional. is a testament to liz that is a long speech she has to deliver you did and she great. makes it captivating you know yep. because especially after a, uh, a movie where it's all parties and all this yep. energy and and then it's just her talking yeah you know, that is i got assessment. emotional i leaned in at that spot so i think and i again i was like trying to lean in as an audience and just really absorb it then i backed out i was like oh this needs to be on her reel this is amazing work so anyways there you go that's all affirmation for you all there Thank you. uh aj anything you want to say about making it surviving thriving as an actor yeah um i i i tend not to uh get too caught up in it I tend not to to focus on it all the time. Um, I think it's really important, Tony. You just said like, uh, you know, living a life. Um, so you know, I'm a big outdoors person. I will go backpacking in the summer, skiing in the winter. Um, I, I I I just try to live a life um, to be a more um, <clears throat> you know. Uh, uh, well-rounded human being uh, first and foremost, because that's who we're, that's who we're playing on screen. Um, and then in terms of the self tape stuff, like it's not going anywhere, <clears throat> you know, so I, I have gotten better and better and better at the execution piece of that. And so, you know, you can't see it right now, but like I have some of my setup here, like there's a couple of lights uh, that I got that are like these flat panel LEDs, super cheap. I think I got them on Amazon, a couple of like tripods or whatever. And those go, everywhere with me so i take those lights i take those uh tripods i take the tripod that my you know iphone you know clips onto they're always 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 in my car <clears throat> just in case yep. and i can't tell you the number of times where i've had to like set up in you know a friend's uh living room or office or you know guest room or something like that and 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 just shoot a a, a self-tape so you know, being ready um, <clears throat> when the uh, when the when the opportunities come along, um, but not uh, constantly focused on it. Um, and so, you know, it's interesting because I hear and I'm so inspired by people like Liz and Chrissy who are constantly like generating their own uh, material, their own uh, content, etc. Like I love that, and I think that if an actor has that that like drive to do that, they absolutely should. And more actors should. Um, I, I, I don't consider myself a writer and I don't necessarily make my own content. Um, and so for me, I, I tend to focus on just, you know, living a life, mm -hmm. being, being a, uh, you know, a, hu a human being day to day, you know, and then go, Oh yeah. Like, like Liz said, like, I need to do this stuff. I love this stuff. I want to, you know, come back to it. And so <clears throat> every self tape for me, that's my opportunity to perform, you know, and I, and I'm like, I'm like, Oh, cool. Like I get to, I get to, you know, play this character, at, you know, audition for the, for, for this thing. And I've been lucky actually um, the last few holiday seasons, like this time of year, you know, most people say like it does slow down and I've definitely had those years, but the last couple of years have not been that way for me. Um, I literally just got a call back this morning before, nice. <laughs> before we started recording. So, you know, uh, it, it's been, it's been, uh, 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 abundant time of year for, for me, which is, which is awesome. Um, and so I, again, it, it has, <clears throat> it has, uh, been a huge boon for my mental health to not constantly focus on it. Like I did when I first got out of, you know, college, when I first graduated, like I, I would literally spend hours pre 
representation, I would spend hours on, you know, actors access, like clicking and self clicking and submitting, like self submitting all the time, all the time, all the time. Um, and then I was like, why, why am I doing, I, I didn't get any, you know, no auditions came from it. I think I got one call back. I never booked anything. I'm like, why am I spending so much time, you know, doing this when I'm not enjoying it? Mm-hmm. And now I focus on the joy. Yeah. Go where the joy is. <laughs> yeah. It made me think too. I don't know how you actors identify with this, but uh, it's almost like this, this karmic universal reality that when you do book yourself vacations or spend time for yourself, the auditions seem to come in. <laughs> so, so yeah, I would say do that, uh, play on more time. And I totally agree. Actors have all of those self tape gear materials in your backpack, in your suitcase. I had to do one while I was in Hawaii in the summer. It's like, just, it never fails that when you try to get away, things come in. I don't know what that is, but you need to be ready and prepared. So those, those are some good, good tips. Okay, last question, Christine, for you. Uh, you're obviously crafting your own stuff and uh, you're also married to someone in the industry too. What about you? What are some thoughts that you would share with others as we end today? Uh, thoughts about, about taking... Yeah, just like sustaining this life as a, as a creative, as an actor and filmmaker in your case. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the community being important is huge. Uh, a funny thing that I'll say that I did years ago is I... <laughs> this is maybe a little embarrassing. I feel vulnerable sharing this. But I, I made a Google Doc called Chrissy is Great. And mm-hmm. every time somebody, you know, says something kind to me or my work is acknowledged in some way, I put a quote from it in this document. And like I said, it sounds very silly, but you know, now this document, and I started this a while ago, but now it's 20 pages long or whatever. And so, you know, when you're feeling down, you can be reminded of, you know, that because I think as an artist, you know, part of part, I mean, a huge part, maybe the entire part of why I do it is the joy of, you know, communicating and sharing uh, something with someone and touching somebody and it, and some, especially with self tapes, I know we were talking a lot about that as actors, you can feel, you know, in a vacuum, you can feel like you make a tape and you send it out into the world and nobody ever sees it. And so to be reminded that your work is meaningful to one person or that something that you did touch somebody made, made them rethink something to me, I think is what keeps me going and makes me motivated to keep creating even when it can be challenging and so it's a silly a silly tip but for me creating that document has been a nice a nice thing that i can go back to and remind myself why i'm doing this that's all those rainy day notes so yeah. practical <laughs> yeah affirmations like learning to affirm ourselves and how self-love sounds so new well, and so often you so forget true. the things yeah. that people say or you forget you don't you don't acknowledge it you hold on to any negative comment any For criticism sure. that stays with you instead so of focus on the positive ones has been very helpful so this seems like an open invitation to send christine encouragements and affirmations <laughs> yes, so you please. end up in her document, right? Like become page 21 today. Oh, I hope yes. you feel, I hope you feel the love. You could Christy. write a review on letterbox. I look Ooh. at those too. Say there nice things go. about the movie on IMDb, wherever you want. There you go. <laughs> I, I will be, I'm a fan and so huge kudos to all of you for making something fun and warm. And what I also love too, it's strategic that every year now you have something to promote every December, you can get people's eyeballs on this. Like we can't say that about a lot of our films, but a holiday movie really has that potential. I will so. say that holiday or horror, conversely, that having a seasonal time go. where people right. watch it has been a real sort of gift and, and surprise to me and, and to yeah. have that recurring. It's so smart. So hu- way, way, way to go. Uh, we're not done yet. We're going to end with our final segment of the show. Brave faves. TV shows, films, books, songs, technology, clothing, podcast, food, and more. These are a few of our favorite people, places, and things. Brave Faves. Okay, I'm going to start with my Brave Fave of the week. Uh, This is another fun indie film by an indie filmmaker who I've been following. This is his second feature film. It's called I Love My Dad, uh, James Morosini. I actually reached out to him, so maybe he'll be on the show, but it's on Hulu right now. It's a really fun story super uh, comedic and totally cringy about a guy who gets catfished by his own father really fun uh, another great way as an indie filmmaker to be inspired about what can be made on a, on a small budget and a small and ensemble cast i really <laughs> liked it had a few good laughs and james who's also an actor himself as well turned filmmaker is really interesting to watch so 
Go check it out on Hulu. I love my dad. That's my brave fave. How about you, Christine? What's your favorite thing? Of the week? Uh, I will throw out something that I watch every holiday season. That is weird, but I love it. And it's the Pee Wee Christmas special. <laughs> I don't know if it's been re-released on DVD and Blu-ray, I believe, last year. Um, it's weird and so fun. And like you can't watch it and not enjoy yourself. There's a segment for everyone. Uh, star-studded cast uh it's bonkers and i can't believe it got made and was made for children and i recommend watching it and not smiling because i don't know that you could do that i dare you <laughs> oh there it is <laughs> peewee's uh, christmas Pee special Pee christmas special also joan rivers in her cameo wears the sweater that is literally like my dream one year i'm gonna make it when she puts her arms out it says merry christmas across we've got <laughs> Whoopi in it oprah's in it dinah nice. shore i mean little richard it's, that is it's beautiful. Magic. And Terry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. My oh, my. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. I love Pee Wee Herman bringing up my childhood. That's fantastic. Elizabeth, what do you got? Um, I was watching really old episodes of SNL this week because Peacock now has all of them. So, um, and also it's another opportunity to promote Peacock for our movie. But no, I legitimately was doing that. They have the whole library on Peacock. And I have some holes in my SNL knowledge. So I'm trying to, you know, educate myself because I hate that feeling when someone's like, have you seen this sketch? And I haven't. So I'm trying to be more with it. So yeah, go Peacock. And yeah, SNL. Gosh, some great, some great people on all of those. I mean, for over 40 years. I mean, geez Louise, that's amazing. Okay, good. Uh, Vin, what you got? Oh, man, everyone's just so much better than mine. Uh, <laughs> I, we're obsessed with 90 Day Fiance in this house. And <laughs> There's a bunch of different iterations of it. There's 90 Day Fiance, The Single Life, where failed couples go date. Uh, we watch every iteration of it. We're obsessed with it. It's fascinating. It's kind of sweet. There we go. There's Kim. Uh, <laughs> it's really like a great way after a long day to just like turn your brain off and just get absorbed into these insane relationships. Uh, and the casting's incredible. And I highly, highly recommend it. Are there holiday episodes on 90 Day Fiance? We must know. There are. Uh, sure. Yeah. Things take place during Christmas time. Definitely. Okay. Google that. That's great. Thanks, Vin. <laughs> All right. AJ, what do you have? Uh, I, I never picked Vin <clears throat> and his wife for 90 Day Fiance people. That's amazing. <laughs> um, I, uh, I know I'm late to this party, but I have uh, lately been obsessed with and binging uh, like crazy uh the, the television show, what we do in the shadows. Oh, um, so good. I, I just, it's so, it's just so funny. Like Agreed. every single episode, I am just cackling from start to finish. Um, <clears throat> and it's just so brilliant. And like, just the writing is genius. Um, the actors are incredible. Uh, it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed. So uh, yeah, the, 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 the TV show is what I'm referring to now, but obviously the film is genius as well. Yeah, I I love that show honestly so much. I laugh. I I, I kind of get frustrated that someone was so fantastic in their brilliance of creating a mockumentary about vampires. I'm like, what in the world is so good? So, and Henry um, is it Guyot? I forget how you say his last name, but who plays one of the main roles? He's like the familiar, the assistant to one of the vampires. Guillermo. Gu Guillermo. Guillermo. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh, he alone, I feel like, in Nadja, all of the vamp. I mean, I, yeah, so that's a great one, AJ. Thank you it's for that genius. one. I love genius. that show too. I'm a big Colin Robinson fan myself. Colin mm. Robinson. Oh, you like them? You like them energy you, vampires? Are you all the way through? Do you know what happens? To I, Colin I'm Robinson? not, I actually okay. am late, so don't say anything. Okay, won't say anything. Oh gosh, are you AJ? Are you through all of the. I, I, oh, yeah, I know what you're God. talking about. Yeah. It's so dang good. Y'all, there's so much great storytelling out there. Go enjoy it. Uh, thank you all. Do not go away. I need to say thank you to all of our team. This is our last episode of 2022 we can't do it without our producer thank you to our producer amy cohen from austin texas uh, amy has been live happy hanukkah to you amy uh, has been live doing our, our quotes and she coordinates all of our guests and communications has been such a gift to us we're so grateful and her daughter is our intern who takes all the clips and, and edits them and does social media so thank you to jessica cohen from austin texas our podcast editor is barnell amos from grand rapids michigan as well as our social media producer carrie alley in 
Grand Rapids, Michigan. Happy holidays to you all. We're so grateful. Christina Jackson, my co-host, will be back in 2023. I'm saying that, 2023, uh, which is wild. And we're super grateful to do all this. So we are a nonprofit. So all of the work that we do here is only possible because of the donations, the corporate sponsors that we get. This show is commercial free because of our our corporate sponsors and donors who help us to, to do it. So if you want to be a part of it, you can just use your phone and take the um, open the text app and use the word brave maker, one word brave maker and text it to 44321. That's 44321. And you'll get a link right on your phone and you can become a donor. We have people who give $5 a month, $10 a month, $100 a month to help us to do all of this work. And if you're $25 a month or more, you get VIP experiences to some of our film festivals. Uh, you do get a VIP pass to the July 2023 film festival because basically if you do all the math, it works out to getting one whole VIP pass for our four days in July. We love, love doing this work. So please consider becoming a donor by the end of 2022. Get that tax right off. Uh, all right, let's uh, close our show with just going around and saying where people can find you on the internet, Christine. Hi, uh, you can find me at Inst Instagram's probably the best place right now, especially uh, at Christine Weatherup or at See You Next Christmas Movie, because that is me. <laughs> and there's giveaways happening. Elizabeth, where can people find you? Uh, Liz Guest with two Zs on Instagram. Thank you, Vin. Uh, I'm at Vin Vessio with two Vs, uh, but separated. <laughs> <laughs> Just minute. AJ. Uh, yeah, I'm at Digital Actor on all the things. Uh, but yeah, Instagram is probably a good place to start. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I hope you feel all the holiday love. I hope you're getting a ton of attention for this fun film. I hope you're inspired to keep doing and going. And if Brave Maker can help with anything else in the future, uh, please let us know. We love indie filmmakers. And this has been super inspiring to me. Honestly, I'm, I got all these ideas brewing because of the conversation and because of watching the film. So thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Heck thank yeah. Thanks well, so much. Don't go away after the bumper. I'll see you in a minute. But everybody else, have a great holiday and happy new year. See you next Christmas or Hanukkah. <laughs> all right. Brave stories change the world and you are the story. Bye, everybody. <laughs>